everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the Colpac and Izzo podcast, brought to you by Gate City Bank, along with Jeff Colpac. I'm Dom Izzo, joining you here in the middle, late part of January. There's no doldrums of things we can talk about, as Colpac is always fired up about something, or I'll get him fired up about something over the next half hour. Jeffrey, I'm going to start right here because I want to ask you your thoughts on this because I've, I've already talked about it on my radio show. Lay it on me. But what happened uh, in Lawrence the other night with the Kansas-Kansas State uh, basket brawl, so to speak, at the end of the game, uh, our colleague Gene Taylor is going to have to deal, dole out some punishment. There's already been some uh, levied, I know, on the Kansas side of things. Uh, first, what did you think when you saw it? Second, what do you think should happen? Typical basketball brawl, which was a bunch of <laughs> basketball players trying to act like boxers. Nothing really landed, right? No. It was just a bunch of flailing arms and, and threats. And, yeah, it's not good the stool for the game. Was, the stool was the scary part. The D'Souza kid from Kansas getting that over his head with that photo, that image, that will probably will stick with people for a while. That Thankfully, nothing happened on that front. Correct. But, yeah, it's, I mean, I think it's – it's a post game skirmish. It wasn't a brawl. Right? So it, saying, it wasn't a brawl. It was a skirmish. Of, in terms of there was no punches thrown. Exactly. No. But I what's mean, the difference between skirmish and brawl? If you were to punches landed, I guess. Probably. Exactly. Yeah. Were there punches landed? I it's hard to tell from some angles. Other ones you can sell there is they were close. The part that's scary to me, A, the stool, B, how close they were to the fans. That's the part that got hairy in my mind. Yeah, they're big men. Yes. And I mean that. That was an inch or inches away from really, really being bad. I'm not trying to diminish it, Dom, but I'm just saying it wasn't a brawl. It was a skirmish. Yeah. And, that, and skirmishes are not good either. No. It's not good. It's a post-game thing. It's a rivalry. It's, it is that. You know, things are heated. But let's not go overboard and call it a brawl. Did you have a problem with, A, the Kansas State player going for the steal, and, B, the Kansas player then blocking the layup attempt when the game was – it's a 20-point yeah, game. All above, you know, post-game, just finish the game. <laughs> just end the game. Yeah. Be cool, brother. Yeah. Just end it. And don't be don't be going for a steal. Come on. Yeah, and that's just that's just such that's in the baseball vernacular, it's called Bush League. Is it equivalent to stealing a base when you're up by 10 runs in the 7th inning, something like that where that 100% a, and then a pitch gets thrown behind the guy later on in Not, that same inning. Oh, well, I'll take hockey. All right. okay. I have seen this in hockey. Okay. I saw it in high, high school hockey when my son played. That And we were not good. Our team was just bad a couple of years, just downright horrible. We would be in running time. It would be late in the game. We're down 11-1, maybe 12-0. And they have their leading score, other teams – it happened more than once, would have their leading score on the ice for the last five minutes just whapping up goals, racking up goals. Wow. I saw that more once, probably yeah. a handful of times. Just like, padding stats, you're saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Absolutely. That, that, and I'm surprised there wasn't brawls from that. Because <laughs> if I'm a hockey yeah. player and, and I'm just going, you know. Could leave some bad taste in people's mouths. It clearly did with you. Absolutely. I can't even imagine for the players. If that was going, I'll call somebody out. Wade Story itself. He kept uh, the Sandy kid on the ice for, you know, last whatever, six, five minutes on running time. Interesting. He's no longer coaching there, and that's not why. No. You know, stuff like that is just, it's almost more wrong than what Kansas State and Kansas did. And that you're talking high school kids here. You're talking embarrassing people. What do you think? I think D'Souza got, that's the Kansas player, got 12 games. Do you think that's pretty appropriate? He was the one who had the stool above his head and was, you can't say instigator, but he was one of the main agitators. That, I that's guess. a pretty good, that's, that's a pretty good it's penalty. Hefty. Yep, I'm, I'm there I'm there with you. That was. Yeah, you, 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 now you have a weapon. Right. I mean, that, that could have got, man, it was just inches away from being really, really bad. So uh, we'll make the transition here to the other games going on in college hoops. The Bison men played last night, Wednesday night, in Brookings, lost by six to South Dakota State in a game where, uh, Jeff, they were down 15 in the first half where they couldn't throw the ball in the ocean. They got uh, things going in the second half, but the Jackrabbits ended up uh, hanging on and and winning the game. So the Jacks now have a a clear uh, lead in the summit now, a one-game lead over the Bison and Oral Roberts. What do you Six take and from two to what four do you, and two. What, Yeah, what do you take from the game last night? NDSU just didn't really show up 
but I think with some aggressiveness in the first half. And you need to do that at Frost Arena. Mm. Frost is a tough place to, to play. I've seen it many times over the years. If you don't match the crowd and the intensity right off the bat, and Dave said after the game that Dave Richmond that South Dakota State maybe was a little more uh, backs against the wall mentality, I think was his quote. Mm. And because they had just got hammered by USD. They did. Yep. Although they got their leading scorer, Douglas Wilson, back, who is a player. He can play. Yep. But they so it sounded like maybe they're a little more hung, hungry than NDSU was. Now the Bison got to come back. You got to play Denver. And that's almost a must win game. No, it's not. It's not a must win game. It's a home game. You got to win all your home games, though. Conference, you got to win your home games, don't you? I think so. I subscribe to that theory. You win all your home games in league play, and you go 500 on the road, you're you're doing okay. It's hard to win on the road when your leading scorer, Vini Shi, is 4-16 from yep. the field. He, he, Didn't hit a three-pointer until late in the game. Yep. Just w- was not on, and that happens to a team. And obviously the Bison didn't have enough around him to uh, make up the difference. That it, 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 Sometimes you're just not going to win games on the road. I look at it right now with the Jacks, the Bison, Oral Roberts has got to be in the conversation. It's a handful of teams. Is there is there anybody else? I think South Dakota probably will insert itself with Hagedorn, sure, into the conversation. You, do you have anybody else beyond those four that that uh, is Omaha? For, is Omaha's three and two right now? Yeah. I, I mean, they obviously they played for the league title last year. And in, in, in it's going to be a it's going to be a really good Summit tournament oh, in March. I think so too. Just uh, there's going to be I, I think a few games go down to the certainly the final few possessions, and there may be even an upset or two or more, if you could call it an upset. Right. Now, there will be no Western Illinois beating South Dakota State because there is no South, South Dakota, Dakota State, State of last year, year right. this year. Yep, that's a good point. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. I think the next five, six weeks of conference play is really uh, really going to be interesting on the men's side. On the women's side, uh, the Bison broke through, got their first league win beating UND uh, on Sunday. Uh, this is a team that we talked about this on the pod a few weeks ago. I i have under the impression they're playing harder for Jory Collins. I don't know if they they have the talent yet. Uh, I think there's a lot of talent that's sitting out right now waiting to get clear for the NCAA to play uh, next season, Colpac. But I thought there were some good strides they took in the win on Sunday over UND. I like the head coach. I said this on the podcast last week that this is the guy, I think, that is going to move this program forward finally. And because he's realistic. And because he's doing it in steps that I think are important, number one is you got to get back to those teams in the 90s, as good as they were, right. they were mentally would crush you. They were just mentally were tough, tough kids. Yeah. Just yep. Nadine Schmidt from the farms of Braddock, you know, Tanya Fisher from they'd take her 20 miles out of town, and run back into town through the bluffs <laughs> of southwestern North Dakota. Rachel Otto, growing up shooting poops and in a snow-covered driveway Lynette in New Rockford. Mund in Milner, right. In, in right a now. barn when it's 10 degrees. Yeah, you right. know? Yep. So I, I think they are finally have somebody at the helm who realizes that, okay, before we get better, we got to get better mentally. And there's making strides this year. It's not going down. You're right. Nope. And beating UND was big. Absolutely. I mean, the dif- differential between these two schools – in the last decade, has been enormous. Yeah, but it's a wide gap. And has Jory Collins already cut the gap in in half a year? Mm. Well, UND's down. They're young this yep, year. Yeah, they're very young. They are. But uh, maybe a little bit. I, I think UND's probably come down just because they're young, and I think that, I think the Bison are better. So, yeah, I'll agree with you on that. Yes. You got to remember, the Bison, on the bench, they have Heaven Hamling, who was a Miss Basketball finalist from Grand Rapids. Who played last year at Stephen F. They have a, Marie Olson, a 6'1 forward from California. Transfer from SMU. SMU. Yep. Yep. Sitting on the bench, waiting out the transfer period. They, I, they apparently got three recruits that he likes he as said far as their mentality. Yep. They're tough. Yep. He, he definitely told us that. So I, I'm curious to see. And uh, I like the fact he tells it like it is. Yes. And I've talked to a couple yep. alums that I really appreciate that too, that, yeah, they do have a long way to go. His quote, we have a long way to go, no doubt about yeah. it. He's no dancing around that. I do I do appreciate that. Now, last week you got to see the South Dakota women up close. They are ranked. They are high major. They are, I mean, they are ranked in the in the big pool. Not the mid-major pool, the AP pool. They whipped the Bison. More impressively, Colpac, they whipped the Jacks 83-48 to on Sunday. Did you ever think you'd no. ever see that no. with A.J. Johnston? No. Coaching no South Dakota State. I mean, Don Plitzewhite's got it going with a team that 
last year they made the NCAs that is an at large and Colt back there. If somehow they get beat in Sioux Falls, they're going to get another at large this season. Not, I don't think anybody's going to beat him. I don't think touch him. I don't think. I mean, what they South Dakota State is is still good, but not nearly what they have been over the past few years. Just a complete team. You got Man. that six foot point guard Sierra Duffy Duffy yep. from She's Rapid City. Really good. Yep. You got the, the Aaron's girl is good. I mean, they're just they're all and over the six the three girl from the from the cities underneath who yep. the Mexico State transfer. I forgot her name, but. She's just tough underneath and just a good shot and strong. Yeah. Hannah Jervin's really Jervin's, good. That's yep. her. Uh, McKeever, who from Winnemac starts and is a good player. Chloe Lamb gives them some good minutes. I mean, they're. And these are girls not from, they're not from New Mexico. No. They're not from Florida. No. They're not from Texas. They're from a tri state area that's touching South Dakota. A couple from Nebraska, Minnesota. Girl, like you said, with McKeever right right yeah, down the Winn- road here yeah, from Winnemac. I, I mean, I'm looking at their star players. You got, <laughs> I don't even know this town in South Dakota. Sully Buttes High School. I don't know. That's but that's way out there in in South Dakota. Man, is that out by Rapid City? That, that's it sounds out like there. It. So you got Erskine. You got Rapid City. You already mentioned with the Duffy uh, girl, Harrisburg, South Dakota, Rogers, Minnesota. Um, we're a couple from out east. One from Michigan. One from Virginia. That that puts the whites got. But man. For the most part, but the core of the team. Exactly right. Exactly right. It hails from the upper Midwest, and they're legit, Colfax. When I, I wasn't surprised what they did to the Bison. I was certainly surprised what happened when what they did to the Jackrabbits on on Sunday. That was eye opening to me. It'll and, be yeah, and I think this is the one program that you're talking about the Bison women. They're drawing like 300 people. And for a good reason. Why not? Let's go to doubleheaders next year. We mentioned this we talk, last yeah, week. Yeah, we talked about that at the end. Just and sell one season ticket. Now, it happened last week because of the weather. But it wasn't a true doubleheader. See, they that's they, they the, had to empty the arena. I don't get that. Why did they make them leave? That made no Be, sense Because you me. have separate season ticket I, holders. I, I get it, but uh, because I, te- I texted you this on Sunday because I asked you what the crowd was like for the men's game. And you told me the exact quote you said was not rivalry-like. Is that... It You're, wasn't. Was that because it of felt like an Omaha game? Was that because of the game being rescheduled, being out of Sunday? I don't the know. Weather? All, I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, I I just don't. I remember at halftime, I, I was talking to a person I know nearby. I go, this feels like Bison are playing Omaha. Yeah, it doesn't feel like UND at all. Back in the day, that the place would just be jammed. Do you think it'll ever get back that way, or this is the way it is? This is not how the it is foreseeable now future. Yeah, yeah. I, I you're probably right. Uh, on that on that point, to the attendance part, how many season ticket holders are there in women's basketball? I would say there's not many. No, but I'm wondering if you could just go to them and say, "Hey, can we relocate you to a seat here or there?" And and what do you think? And, and we'll sell the men's and women's ticket as one. As one. I think you got to do something, yeah. Dom. You, just just doing status quo and, and throwing the same thing out. No, it's not it working. Ain't, it ain't working. They're not even coming close to filling it. No. First off, they got to get off Sundays. They got to get off Wednesday, and they got to get off Sunday. Thursdays and Saturdays are the days to play. And you know that from your days, even covering the NCC. It was, it was Friday, Friday, Friday Saturday. Saturday. But, you know, the early days of the Summit League for NDSU, and I was just talking about this with Dave Richmond the other day. I'm like, the, the league has to do whatever it can to get on Thursday, Saturday. It'll help now with K- UMKC coming to the league, but they're still not going to have uh, the right amount of teams. Well, right now there's men's and women's games sporadic, meaning there's games every week. Right. There's one or every two day. every week. right. And is it who's playing today? Is it a Thursday? Is it a Saturday? Is it an afternoon? Right. Is it the men, women playing? Right, and that's the problem. Like so, back in the NCC days, it was every other weekend, and you knew that. You knew it was every other weekend in January and February. So you go to a South Dakota, South Dakota State doubleheader. Right. On January fifteenth, you knew in two weeks, Omaha and Augie or whoever right. would be coming back to the Bison Sports Arena. You knew that. You don't know that anymore. No. You don't know what's going on. How many? How often do you know when they play? I'm, I'm not trying. Uh, to, I don't. I'm not, I'm not calling. Out, you know, I'm not calling you out, but I'm just saying. Well, do the Bison men play on Wednesday, or they play on Thursday this week? You know what I, I mean? If we're if we're having a hard time, imagine fans for that matter. You know what I mean? That that's that's a big that's a big deal right now. I think in attendance. So I'm just wondering. I'm just throwing the question out there that I'm wondering if it's possible to just shake up. The way things are going, they this- got to do something. You're dead on about it. Just doing what they have done ain't working. That ain't working. If they want to get butts in the seats, and on this count, football, maybe football, it's going like this, yep. right? A little bit, it, certain enough. Not a little bit. It was dropped off the table during the playoffs. Right, what can you do? What can you think out of the box? We should hire ourselves in as consultants. <laughs> but 
I don't know if they want to hear from us. Let's think but. of no, they don't. But let's think about out, out of the box a little bit. Okay, well, what about the Wi-Fi thing? Maybe may, yep. will that yep. bring in another hundred people? I don't know. How about the concessions? You Sell already, beer. You, you said I know you, you're okay. not you're not in favor of that. I'm not for football. No, because well, look, what, it hasn't really done anything for basketball. You know what I mean? It so why not? It hasn't really. There's exactly. That's my point. But they're not bringing in any extra revenue now at basketball. Okay. Well, it, well, give it a I mean? shot in football then. <laughs> There's not going to be any riots. I mean, no, I, I just. I'm it, actually kind of surprised. I'm a little surprised that the beer thing has been as low and inconspicuous as it has. I knew, I figured it wouldn't be a big deal. I, I really did. Mm-hmm. But I didn't. I'm just amazed that you can't, you can't even notice it anywhere where I'm at. I'll look up in the stands. I can't see. I can, I can see some oh, people standing. Ba- you're talking about basketball. basketball. No, sorry. I see people yep. standing there. Yep. And I'm guessing that's a beer garden's up right. and left. Or, yep. Not a whole lot. No. There's McFeely. <laughs> he doesn't miss he doesn't miss an opportunity to go. No, I'll say that. I they need to do something. I, I think but this is as you had, and you talked about this several times throughout the fall. This is not a NDSU problem. This is a sports problem, college and professional, of getting people butts in the seats because it's a heck of a lot. How nice was it for us last night to turn the television on and watch the game? You know what I mean? That so, that, that was uh, pretty convenient to turn the television on and watch the basketball game. So over that. the weekend, I watched the movie Jobs on Netflix on Stephen Jobs oh, yeah. and the way he turned Apple and, and just the way he thought about the world. And people would come to him and say, uh, okay, what about this? No, think above and beyond something. That, now, Stephen Jobs was not a nice man. Nope. I'm not saying that. Nope. But he got people to think a little above and beyond and what next thing you know, you have Apple watches. You have you got everything. I mean, yep. it's just the, the technology advances under his watch, so to speak, was really quite enormous and quite striking. Now, do you take that mentality? And I'm not telling Matt Larson to take his staff together and do a Stephen Jobs mandate, you know, mm-hmm. demands, and <laughs> and you better be here till midnight every night until I hear a better answer. But I think you got to try to do something, and you got to think about it. And maybe they are, because we're, sure we're not privy are. to their meetings, and we never will be. I, I'm sure they are, and, and they certainly know about the – I mean, you know they're talking about it. I would say another student section of, of tickets is up for grabs. I would don't think you, so. With football? Absolutely. That, that's, on the, that's on the chopping block after they did it a couple years ago. I would think that's certainly going to be I mean, they, I, I, I think they sold tickets at the union. They tried doing yep. that. Yep. Obviously, maybe it worked for the – Semifinal, finally, right? It worked. Something worked for that game, but I think that was so. Kudos for them for doing for doing that. Maybe they have been doing that. I don't know. It's uh, that this is the the time though where those ideas will get thrown out. It's a different. It's we are. I'm an '80s generation guy, and so I'm not. I I don't know what the latest generations. What what really stokes them? What gets them going? Everybody's attention span is divided nowadays. You know what I mean? Uh, To to get somebody to focus for two hours, three hours on anything. I mean, movie theaters are going through the same thing. People aren't going to the movies anymore to sit for two hours. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, that, I know. That's I mean hard. after 20 minutes, this thing starts to bore me. <laughs> I mean, that's where we're at right now, so we better... Uh, as you can see, we, I'm, we I'm, starting to lose, I'm starting to lose interest. <laughs> well, how about this? Bo Pelini, LSU reunion. That got some Will heat. Will it happen? That got some heat. Now, Pelini... They haven't hired anybody yet. ...has said he's not interested. He's not leaving. Now, Football Scoop initially reported this on Monday saying... So there was something there. Something was out there. And that Bo, if he was going to go, wanted the assurance from Youngstown that Carl was going to be the next head coach at Youngstown. And maybe Youngstown said, I don't know about Carl. I don't know Carl Pelini other than just the name and the D coordinator thing. He's coached a couple other spots and it hasn't, hasn't really worked. It, things have not, gone, have not gone well. So, so I wonder if Bo tried to pull the old... A little power play on Youngstown, yeah. and Youngstown, and and Jim Trestle said, "Not so fast." Do you think he would want to leave Youngstown? You, this is something you were hot and heavy on this last season. You thought he was done after the 2018 year, and I think you were, and I, I was too. I was surprised he came back. Well, last season. and so were people in the business that, yep. that knew him yep. pretty well. Yep, thought maybe he'd be on the move. He's been offered. We know that from the, a couple of the reports that have been out there that there have been other jobs that have been offered his way and he he said no he's got now i believe a daughter that's a junior in high school and that's obviously maybe that's that's, that's a, a way up. that's a huge deal too that he doesn't want to move uh until she graduates high school that that's that's a big deal i've always been under the impression that when you live in the world of major college athletics 
and he knows some pros too. That it's an it's a world where the dollar is is where whatever you want, mm. whatever you need to spend here it is. You're the D coordinator of LSU, which he was. How much money do you need to recruit these people? You're the head coach in Nebraska. What do you need? Right. Here's here's a private plane to go recruit here and there. What do you need to get? You got it. Now in the world of Youngstown State athletics, it's budget, man. Correct. It, it's it's pennies compared to the FBS. No doubt. So I always was, and, and he wouldn't. I and think he knows I, this. I asked him yeah. too. I, but I don't know what his answer was. Obviously, he's not going to admit it. But the world of Youngstown athletics, athletically and and monetarily, I don't know how a guy like that can live in that world much longer yeah. because he was used to the other world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, he's done this now for five years. He's been the coach at Youngstown, and I, I, I was of the belief that he was gone after the 18th. Matt Ants, so. he's, he's, he was used to the world of Western Illinois, Northern Iowa, Winona. Correct, Wayne State before, right. He was used to that monetary world. The penny pinching was extreme. So this, right? yeah, this is a luxury, right? Yeah, this is Park Place. <laughs> he was on Baltic Ave. Is Baltic? Is that a poor one? Uh, what is a poor God, one? I haven't played while. that so long. God, it's been a while since I played. <laughs> anyway, he was on one of those poor ones. The early, <laughs> the earliest parts of Monopoly. Yes, I guess. So, you. so compared to that, he's he's got a hotel on Park Place. I, I don't think Bo's going. I think he's going to stay. I, I I know LSU is still looking to replace Dave Aranda, who took the Baylor job. I, I I'm I'd be surprised if he were to. Go and work for Coach O, <laughs> go for Ed Orgeron in, in Baton Rouge. That would that would surprise me on that front. On another coaching move that actually has a direct uh, tie to North Dakota State, uh, Joe Moorhead, who was the Mississippi State head coach, who was fired a few weeks ago. Uh, Mario Cristobal hired him as Oregon's new offensive coordinator, which obviously that's who the Bison open up 2020 with. He's an FCS guy, Colpac. He coached and had success at Fordham. Uh, for four years before he got the Mississippi State gig. So he will not be surprised by the NDSU Bison in their 37-game winning streak yes. coming to town. Yeah. But yep. now can he get that through to his players? That'll be another big deal. Yeah, I'm curious on on that front. Uh, more had spent a couple of years at Penn State before he got the uh, Mississippi State Mediterranean gig. Avenue. <laughs> that's it. That's the year. That's, that's almost Youngstown-like. Yeah, that's where they're at right now. Appreciate you looking that up, by the way. <laughs> and and, uh, and figuring You want to play out. after this podcast? I, I, uh, you talk about boring. Long of Monopoly? <laughs> Holy cow. That, that, might, uh, that might weigh us down a little bit. Before we go, I have to ask you about uh, one guy declaring uh, early out of the FCS for the NFL draft. Uh, the guy from Monmouth, uh, Pete Guerrero, who is a fantastic player, one of the finalists for uh, the Walter Payton Award, is leaving Monmouth after his junior year and put a his name surprised. into the NFL draft. What do you think? Is he going to get drafted? Somebody must be telling him he is. Obviously. Well, a lot of, they, a lot of them tell you he are. Right, a lot of well, agents go. Yeah, you, that's the problem. Uh, fifth, sixth round, yeah, I bet. That's the problem. People are tell, probably telling them that. That's why I'm. I I'm think surprised. it's a bad move. I, I think it's too. a bad move. Unless he's thinking he can't do anything else at Monmouth, that they had the best year they possibly, and they did. They won the Big South. They made the made the tournament. They lost to James Madison. In the, you never in the know. It could round. be an academic thing. It could be. Yep. Uh, it could be a family support thing. You, you you don't know those no, factors. Nope, that is very true. So, but you also have to make the squad there, Pete. Right, you got to make a team. Yeah, that's the interesting part. Is we're watching the Senior Bowl go on, and I'm I'm a little disheartened with the lack of FCS guys that are there. There's only four at the Senior Bowl uh, this year, as opposed to last year. We saw uh, quite a few guys. Colin Saunders is the one that stood out, obviously last year, the Western Illinois kid who now. Colfax a year later is going to be playing in the Super Bowl with Kansas City. And it'll be interesting to see how Marquise Bridges does in the Hula Bowl. Yeah. I've, That's a good get for him. Tuska had, I think, a really good week uh, down in St. Petersburg, as did Ellison. The question now is, do they get a combine invite between now and the end of February to Indianapolis? Because that's where you get poked and prodded, but that's where you make your money. Easton Stick got that invite to Joe Hay. Obviously, Wentz did. Bruce, those guys all got the invite there to get looked at by all 32 teams, and that's the the golden ticket, so to speak, in my mind. And what do you think? I think Tuska may. I'm not sure about Ellison. Um, well, you never know, because now the NFL, the way it's going with tight ends, they look like George Kittle. 
And Kittle, what do you need? Kittle's 6'5". Kittle can catch the ball and block. And I know Ellison's not that tall, but Ellison can certainly block, and he can catch the football. So I, I don't know. Tusk, I think so, Colpac. I think his his late season performance that he had at NDSU to go on top of what he did at the at the Shrine Bowl, I think. And to have a sack and a half there. in front of ABC television yep. cameras yep. didn't hurt. I think so, too. I think that was a big deal. So we'll keep our eyes uh, on that. Bison wrestling tomorrow night with Oklahoma. Is that a big deal with Oklahoma coming to Fargo? I know they've well, been here Big before, 12. but it, it's, a, I, it's just you don't normally it's see a, it's that. It's a conference foe now. Yeah. So, no, it's not a big deal. It's a regular deal. And NDSU is, is, is they got throttled by Wyoming last time yeah. out. I have a pretty good lineup. I have a story going with Jared Fronick. I think it's probably online now from West Fargo. Yeah. Who's making the adaption? He's adapting to this level of competition after crushing everybody in high school. Oh my God, no one was a challenge for him in high school. So that's got to be going from A to Z now because with guys that can the beat N- him. The NCAA championships this year are in Minneapolis yes. at, at U.S. Bank Stadium. Yep. So it'd be nice if NDSU. It'd be nice for their fans if they could qualify a good handful of guys. It does nothing, I think, for the program if it's one or two. I agree. It just it just makes it look like you're, you're irrelevant. And if they go there, they got to do something too. Win a few matches, make it to Friday, make it to Sat. You know, make it. Into I think a- we're waiting for that next step with yeah, this program. I agree. It's been a little bit over the last few. Now they years. dented over the past few years. They made the rank 20, 18, whatever. Right. They they've been yep. in that mix. Now you're never going to probably be in the top five or ten. It's just in the way the sport is. Yeah, right. Most teams just rule. Yep. But I don't think it's unrealistic. You're in the Big Twelve now. Yep. It's not unrealistic to. Get a team every once in a while where you take five, six, seven guys down to the national tournament and, and have a couple hay. and yeah. make some hay. Yeah. I'm, yeah. It's been a while since they've had an All American, so I'm curious to see how that pans out here over uh, the next couple months. So we got Bison Wrestling coming up uh, tomorrow night with Oklahoma. The Bison men play Denver on Saturday. The Bison women are in Brookings on Friday take on South Dakota State. That'll wrap up the latest edition of the Colpac. We got Monopoly to attend to I guess we got to figure out Mediterranean and Baltic Avenues. I'd stomp you, Dom. (laughs) For Jeff Colpac, I'm Dom Izzo. Thanks, everybody, for listening to the Colpac and Izzo podcast, brought to you by Gate City Bank.